All right. We're live. Woo! Hanging out. <laughs> What's going on, Emily? Oh, you know, nothing. Just hanging out with you. Excited yeah. to be here. Nice. And you got a, a beautiful instrument in your lap there. Yeah. This is so, the new Sheridan Stealth. And uh, I love it. I'm so excited about it. Nice. So, um, yeah, and it looks like... Uh, we got some viewers in here and um, want to kind of talk to them about or talk to you uh, and, you know, teach them kind of, uh, you know, what the guitar is all about and um, your journey through, you know, just the process of working with Epiphone and, you know, all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, do you want to kind of just tell us a little bit about the guitar and the specs? And Yeah, you... of course. Yeah, so this guitar is my signature guitar. Um, it just came out on the 16th of March and it's based on my Epiphone Sheridan 2, which I've had for a long time. Um, I, I took it on the road for about a decade. And um, yeah, this, so this is based on that. And there's some unique pieces on it. Um, there's some low output humbuckers, uh, three knobs instead of four. Um, I, I could never reach it, so I had to take it off. And um, three-way toggle switch, uh, diamond F-holes, it's a satin matte black finish, um, it's like aged black, and then um, aged gold hardware, and um, just kind of airbrush gold. What else? Yeah, I love the matte black. That's like, mm -hmm. that's like my my thing. You know, when it comes to you know looking at, at certain things, I'm like, oh man, that's a matte black. Like, yeah, like, like a like a car or like a totally. Like I bought like a matte black uh, video gaming mouse you know, not long ago. And I was like, this is so cool. Uh, I, I think it, I think it's just like, it's, it, it's just got like a classy, but like slick kind of look to it. But like, also like, you know, it's not, you're not like afraid to like, you know, scratch it up or something, you know, it's kind of uh, mm -hmm. like, it has like a durability to it almost. For I feel. sure. Yeah. So, I love the finish because it's like, you know, in like <clears throat> certain guitars that have gloss finish, it's like, it, you can't, roam around the neck is quick and but like it's mm -hmm. the satin feel is great it's nice it's so is this really is quick. it the same kind of satin finish on the back of the neck that is on the front yeah so the body texture is the same as the back and the headstock the whole thing is pretty much satin mac matte black it's um an aged uh satin finish um it's cool because it's not very thick it's like a, a thinner finish um so it resonates really well and has a lot of sustain mm -hmm. um and that was by design too the original sheridan has quite a thick gloss on it and uh so we took that down a notch and and now it you know kind of has this big monstrous sound so yeah nice yeah, yeah and i think too um you know with with the the satin um over the gloss is like i have a, a black gloss Gibson behind me, um, <laughs> and I'm constantly like wiping it down, you know, with fingerprints and all that good stuff. Um, totally. But yeah, no, I mean, it's a beautiful guitar. Um, mm -hmm. How did you? So when you were like kind of going through the process with with Epiphone, um, you know, it's they're like, did they approach you and were like, hey, we want to do a signature guitar? Or how did that that relationship kind of start? Yeah, it started. Well, growing up, <clears throat> my my mom or dad, like you know, we would watch music videos and music was a big part of our family. And so anytime we'd see a Gibson or an Epiphone on TV, like my mom would be like, Oh, that's a Gibson. That's like, that's the top of the line stuff. Uh -huh. So I always had in my mind, like Gibson Epiphone, that's where I need to be. That's the guitar for me. And so I got my Sheridan in a music store, um, you know, like 10 years ago and I've been playing that forever. And so uh, I was introduced to my rep Cody um, by a mutual friend. And so we formed this great friendship. She's one of my closest friends and I love her. And mm -hmm. she flew me and my band out to Nam, uh, not Vietnam, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, the music conference out in um, mm -hmm. Anaheim. And so I did this show for Gibson. I did this like Gibson booth show with my band. And then afterwards, um, you know, the, people approach me and they were like hey do you want to do a signature and i i was like i couldn't believe it and i just started hysterically laughing um and i was so gonna say i was like you, like the reaction <laughs> to that is probably like what <laughs> yeah i mean i was like i i couldn't stop laughing and yeah. 
I was like, of course, that's incredible. I would love to do that. Um, I know exactly what I want. <laughs> and so we did the process that way. And um, over time, we uh, designed a, a few different prototypes. And the first one, it looked just like this, but the, but the humbuckers were high output. And I didn't know this until I was road testing it. But mm -hmm. I was on the road and, you know, I'd throw a fuzz pedal on like I always do. And then the squeal was really intense because these diamond F holes um, resonate differently with high output pickups. So mm -hmm. uh, the next prototype had low output pickups. And I, I was pretty nervous about that because I was like, does this mean that my tone is not aggressive anymore because it's low output? Yeah, but it's actually the opposite. It's actually a really good thing for clarity, you know, especially if you play through a lot of pedals like I do. Mm -hmm. So the pickups are Pro Buckers one and two, and they're classic Almaco um, humbuckers, and they just sound really great. They have a really nice clear mid range that I love, um, and it's it's pretty like flat EQ wise. Um, so yeah, I th I mean. This is if I went into a store and I had to buy a guitar and this was there, I would buy it. Um, there you it's, go. It's great, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you played a little bit of it, um, you know, before we went live here, and um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll have you do a a little demonstration here in a bit. But the thing that I noticed, you know, right away was, um, you know, that overdrive or or fuzz tone, you know, that you're working with was just, just so clear, and I was like, wow, like <laughs> holy crap, that that sounds really good. Um, mm -hmm. Are you are you all plugged in? Do you want to do like a I little am, yeah. little demo of it real quick? Yeah. Um. So I'm on the neck pickup. I'm I'm on the neck pickup a lot. Because I love the sustain of a neck pickup. Yeah. I know a lot of people are like, what, dude, like, why aren't you ever on the bridge? Like, that's where you're gonna stick out. And I'm like, well, yeah. But if you throw an EQ pedal on it, then you can stick out and have the sustain. So that's why I love the neck pickup. Mm -hmm. Um. But I also really think it's important how many different tones you can get out of this guitar. Um, so you can get, so our, right now I've got a compressor pedal and an OCD running. Um, so that's a neck, here's the bridge. that's everything like fully wide open but like another fun thing is like if you hit the bridge pickup and take the tone all the way down and you want that honky like josh Hame queen sound like you can get that yeah. out of this and then if you add an octave pedal in the front Ooh. what's cool too is the neck pickup there's something about the neck pickup that interacts really well with an octave pedal because so right now I'm I've got the tone rolled off completely mm -hmm. and I'm on the bridge pickup and you know I'll slide up to the 12th fret but if I hit the neck pickup the octave is really clear and it's like yeah it's kind of crazy yeah it's really. such a nice touch I yeah I, the octave thing is cool I, I really like it kind of makes those notes really like stand out yeah it's super right cool I'm, I'm mad jealous of, of you and anyone else that's in that room right now of just being in front of a loud guitar <laughs> 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 i'm like man i just want to turn up and you know oh, be, yeah. be in a room with loud instruments again you know like yeah, we were, we were talking you know it's like man we just want to go to a show like not only play a show but go to a show yeah. um which you know hopefully is gonna be soon um but yeah so like you know Obviously, I'm going to bring up the COVID thing. Um, how has that kind of impacted you and your band? And did you have some, some tours scheduled? And, you know, how have you kind of like navigated through the whole thing? Yeah, it's been it's been pretty tough on the entertainment world, for sure, especially musicians, because our entire livelihood and lives are dedicated to packed rooms. Which yeah. is really the opposite of what you're supposed to do right now um so it's been tough but and yeah I, I had a whole you know in 2020 i was supposed to be on the road for most of the year mm -hmm. and then COVID hit and i just started writing an album 
And so last year I spent that year writing an album and then this year it's going to come out. So I got new music in the works coming uh, this summer that I'm nice. really excited about. And um, I played this guitar on the whole album, which is interesting because for the most part in the past, I've, I've used a lot of single coil guitars to layer, but the tonal possibilities of this guitar that I could get out of a recording atmosphere is pretty, pretty incredible, I have to say. And I think it's the low output pickups that helps it, the clarity of it, like shine through all of the signal chains of the desk and the outboard gear and all that stuff. So yeah, definitely. I, I've noticed like, I've gone into, you know, some studios uh, back in the day with multiple guitars. And then it's like, you know, sometimes you just have that guitar that works and you're like, okay, that's, that's what yeah. I'm going to use. <laughs> totally. That's awesome though. Yeah. Especially, you know, with your signature and um, I mean, the studio is the perfect place to test the versatility of a guitar, you know, For sure. um, because you're sitting there and super high fidelity and, you know, you're trying to get those right tones to fit the mood and everything like that. So, you know, it's super cool that you were able to kind of use that that guitar for the for the whole record um yeah. what what pedals and stuff were you kind of uh experimenting with or going through um uh, when you were recording the album you know what i so it's interesting because i started using a compressor pedal which i haven't done that in the past because i've been very anti-compressor pedal yeah um because i never understood why like why would i want to take away my dynamics you know, if it squashes it and then just keeps going and like is a whole block of sound. But the producer I worked with put a compressor before everything. And I ended up really loving the way it felt to play. Mm -hmm. So I've got a JHS Whitey Tidy compressor, which is funny. <laughs> the names of their pedals are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I put that in the front of my chain and then I've got an Earthquaker Devices Tentacle pedal, which is the octave pedal you just heard. Mm -hmm. And then I've got an OCD, which the OCD is my favorite pedal um, because it doesn't compress your amp mm -hmm. like a lot of gain pedals do. It's just this wide open thing and you can, you know, like there's, there's nothing, I guess, filtering out the natural harmonics that you get. And so I've got that on a lot that I I'm normally have that on for pretty much every song. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I've been messing around with like rhythmic delay a lot too. Um, nice. There's a song on the new record called LA New York. And um, so like I'll throw on a carbon copy, uh -huh. classic yeah. MXR carbon copy, you know? That sounds um, incredible yeah it's really i fun. love that yeah um so that's pretty much it i i tend to stick with the ocd and the tentacle as my main like sound mm -hmm. um and then i did discover to the mxr q zone which is an amazing pedal huh um, I, I don't think I've, I've messed with that one what is that what does that do it's basically like a wop like a fixed wah pedal okay. um and you can you can like vary the peak and the Q, like the actual EQ zone of the, um, the wah sound. And it's really cool. It's very Queens of the stone age. And it's like my new favorite thing. Um, it, I don't have it with me at this time, but I have it on my okay. big mega board for live shows now. And, <laughs> um, yeah, I love that pedal. Well, when you, when you come through Chicago, eventually, you know, when, when there's live shows again, I'll stop by and yes, We'll, we'll talk pedals and guitars and, and whatnot. Let's do but, it. but um yeah, just you, you brought up Queens of the Stone Age a couple times. So I kind of wanted to dive in and, and ask you about kind of your influences and you know, when you were growing up, like like when did you decide like, all right, I'm I'm a guitar player. Like this is my instrument. Man, that was early on. I I started playing when I was like five, um, because I saw this guitar in a shop. My my mom took my sister and I to a shop and I saw this like really small kids harmony guitar that i still have mm -hmm. and i just i was like that's the thing you know yeah I, I know it sounds a little weird for a five-year-old to know exactly what they want to do with their life and there's definitely been you know times in my life when i'm like is this even something that i can do like can i make this a profession and you know it's just like a 
everyday thing, like do something towards that goal for me. But yeah, I mean, I've, I feel like it's just kind of in my blood to be a guitar player. Um, and I mean, that that's what makes it even cooler that this is a thing that exists now. Um, yeah. Cause I really thought it would be way later in my career um, that I, that it would happen or if it even did. So um, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome that Epiphone is the supportive of emerging artists like they are. So nice. Yeah. And then, so are you, in texas right now or are you in you're in nashville i'm in austin texas austin. At the okay. showroom right now um, that's awesome i would no. i could say this is my house <laughs> this is my <laughs> house where i live but i don't this is the gibson showroom in austin nice well you can maybe grab one of those like really cool lighted gibson signs and and have yeah. one at your house or something <laughs> dude yeah it's funny it's like i'm in i'm in my apartment obviously you know all of all of zounds is working remote and um, you know, our, our office is in downtown Chicago, but luckily, luckily it's, you know, 2021 and most people have high speed internet and, you know, we can, <laughs> <laughs> we can do these kinds of things, but, uh, yeah, I'm definitely like, you know, being at home is, as has really kind of changed my perspective of like what it's going to be like when I can leave home, you know? Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think like, you know, like we were talking about going to shows and things like that. It's like, I, I feel like people are just like live music is going to just hopefully be amazing like once it comes back i'm yeah. so excited for it I, like i'm like yeah. every day i'm like what's the update what's the update <laughs> you oh. know but uh yeah. but yeah it's 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 crazy so um so austin texas are you born and raised to austin texas or i was raised here um i was born in raleigh north carolina though um and i haven't been in a very long time well that's not true i toured there in early 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 2020 yeah um but I was born there and I moved to Texas when I was around eight with my family. And um, it's a it's a killer city. I mean, music's everywhere. It's, yeah. you know. I was going to say, it. how's the, the, the music scene and everything there? Like, has that kind of played into your, your style or your influence? Or I know like Chicago, m my background is more of like a kind of like a emo punk rock kind of type thing. And I know <laughs> Chicago is like on the map for that um, a awesome. little bit. Would you say like, you know, being in Austin has kind of played uh, a part of your sound and kind of your style? I'd say so. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan. That's yeah. like everyone in Austin's favorite guitar player pretty much. And like, you know, I grew up listening to <clears throat> a ton of classic rock. And then I got into Stevie on my own in college because I downloaded uh, LimeWire. <laughs> I, oh, I remember LimeWire. Oh, Lime it broke Wire many computers. And, yeah, there was another, <laughs> it was either LimeWire or another kind of pirated it's music like app. Do you remember Kazaa? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically in college, I could see like anonymous libraries of music. And mm -hmm. I came across a Stevie Ray Vaughan record from, I don't even know who had it in their library, but I ripped it and I was like, I loved it from the minute I heard it. And so then I just kind of started trying to learn his licks mm -hmm. over and over. And then over time, those licks, I would add things and it became kind of a different style, you know, um, which is the goal of every guitar player, I think, is just to take their influences and add on their own kind of spin. So, um, yeah, Stevie is a huge influence and I don't think if I was from a different city that my love of Stevie would be so ingrained. Um, yeah. You know, there's a statue of him here and it's, you know. There's a statue of him? Oh yeah. Oh Big wow. Statue. Man, I want a statue one day. I got, <laughs> I got to do something cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing something cool now. Oh yeah. Dude, th just wait. There's going to be a, a statue of me in front of the Zounds office coming, come, <laughs> come fall. Come, yeah. Right. And come visit. And you're like, Hey, I know that guy, <laughs> but no, that that's awesome. I, I have to admit, I've never been to Austin. Um, as many opportunities as I've had to go, it, you know, just didn't really work out, but, um, I had some friends move down there, um, within the last couple of years. So I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm going to go down to Austin. And then, and then, you know, travel plans kind of got, um, a little skewed and whatnot, but, uh, I hope to come down there sometime, um, yeah. you know, and really kind of, you know, 
involve myself in in the music scene in the community there because I just hear it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, are there some? Are there any like certain venues or anything that you kind of like started out playing and that kind of became like your home venue? Totally, Stubbs indoors. Stubbs. Um, yeah, those are the first, the first shows. The first venue that I I guess I sold out was Stubbs, and then that kind of became like my like that's my soft spot is Stubbs indoors. That's um, awesome. And I still. I still play there sometimes, you know, obviously not at this point, but mm -hmm. um, just because of COVID. But when it comes back, you know, I'm sure I'll play there again. But that's like my that's my main hang. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I've heard I've heard of that place. I've heard it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's yeah there's all, all kinds of like small venues and midsize venues and stuff that I I just, you know, my heart breaks for them. Um, you know, I, I you know, hopefully they're they're holding on and, um, you know, we'll get back to going to those venues and playing those venues. But uh what what kind of um, are you guys making plans now? Or you guys got the record coming out in the summer? Is that that's probably the main focus? I'm assuming. Yep, main focus. Um, got the got the record coming out, and um, yeah, I'm. I keep hearing from people in the industry that touring is supposed to come back in October, hopefully earlier than that. Mm -hmm. um, and so. I'm pl planning like a run in October and you know, if everything works out, um, yeah, I'm going to do my best to tour on this record. So, yeah. Yeah. Once, once, once it goes back, it's your life's what, like 200 days out of the year on the road or what's kind of yeah. like, what was your touring schedule kind of leading up to COVID? It was pretty intense. Um, yeah. I think the longest tour that I did was about two months. Um, but we would we would play like six shows in a row and then mm. do one day off, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty, pretty intense after a while. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, I just love to do it. So it's like you know, get done with one and I just want to play another one immediately. Um, yeah. I'm like just come back into the room. Like. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, you're like, hey, I got more. I got more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I just love to tour. I love to play live. It's like my favorite thing. So. Nice. Um, when it comes back, yeah, it'll be. It'll be really exciting. Are your um are your bandmates and everyone based out of Austin as well, or did you kind of um find some people in the industry like kind of throughout the country, or how how did you kind of form form your band? Yeah, I got really lucky. Um, my bass player, who's also my best friend, Evan, um, he moved down here from from Memphis. Um, and he's he's an amazing guy, amazing musician. He's oddly enough got a master's in jazz performance. <laughs> Um, and he's a rock bass player, which is, is nice. really cool because he knows all this music theory stuff that I don't really know. Yeah. Um, and then my drummer is a killer drummer. He is from Bastrop, which is like a, sh like a, a city. It's a short distance from Austin, but it's, it's like right outside. Um, okay. and he's like, he's really funny. He was like a football quarterback and like kind of a jock, but he's the sweetest guy ever and a killer drummer. Um, so yeah, we just met through mutual friends and past band members that I've had and uh we've been playing together for about 6 years and it's it's a pretty fun dynamic. Um I don't have brothers, but I consider them my brothers and yeah. they really travel with. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you're spending you know months on end on tour with people, they become family, you know. Yep. <laughs> you got to put up with their with their stuff and <laughs> you know and, and and love them like like family and um, it's a cool, it's a cool dynamic. I think, um, you know, with bandmates and especially people that are, um, you know, they're forming organically and then coming up together as like a, you know, a group, uh, you know, it's just really fun to see. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to kind of circle back, uh, to the guitar. Uh, we did have, um, a question here from, uh, Jeffrey asking about the, the inlays. Mm -hmm. Um, are those mother of pearl inlays or, or what, um, yeah, they are their um lightning bolt inlays. Um and that's a unique feature as well. At the twelfth fret there's a double lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. Um this is the only guitar that has lightning bolt inlays. Um but they're really subtle, but they look really like cool. And it's kind of a tribute to how much I love electricity and yeah. And electric guitar and fuzz boxes and stuff like that. Um yeah, I I wish you could see on the computer. But I know. I need to like, 
I always have like yeah. my so I can like see comments and stuff, you know. So the video that I'm actually looking at is pretty small, so I oh. always have to like make sure I'm not like you know getting <laughs> like, all the way up there. You know, yeah. don't you don't want to look up my nose or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'll stay a safe distance away here. But uh, no, it's a beautiful guitar, and I, you know, mm. I can't wait to play one. And um, you know, I, I think it's just a, it's such a cool thing um, that a, a brand like Epiphone that's so iconic and so you know, just if, if you're a guitar player, you know, Epiphone, that's just, a, yeah. you know, a fact, um, you know, that they're looking at, at all, all kinds of artists and, um, you know, up and coming artists and different genre artists and things like that. And it's just, it's super cool. And I, I have a ton of respect. Um, yeah. So as your experience, not like you're going to say no, but is your experience with Epiphone been pretty, pretty cool? It's been beyond cool. It's been like joining a, a family to be honest yeah. like um they treat their artists so well already but when you work with the people of epiphone and gibson they just really make you feel very special and very at home and i felt that way even you know buying my sheridan i just felt like i was a part of a family and as a 335 player, I kind of felt like I had this like unique edge too. Yeah. So it's like, um, I mean, it's been great. It's, it's, it's a huge part of my life now. And, yeah. you know, my rep Cody's an amazing friend. Um, the, the women who, who run a lot of the, the stuff here are just really incredible women and everybody's just really like family. So it's great. That's awesome. I mean, you can't ask for can't ask for more, you know, when yeah. you're when you're designing a guitar and you know joining sure. that family. So uh, that is super cool to hear. Um, if you don't mind, you want to do a couple more kind of playing samples and demos for the people that are watching. I know we've done a lot of talking, and I'm sure people want to hear the guitar. Of course, yeah. So I showed you my fuzz stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll do something a little more low gain, and this is again a riff from. A song called LA New York, which is going to be on the next record, but uh, awesome. I'll do a little bit of looping for you. Cool. <laughs> We switch places. Let's see. Oh. There we go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just for continuity sake. Uh, that sounds awesome. I love that. Um, are so you were you using that was the delay on the first part there, like you like yeah. kind of demoed earlier. <laughs> yep, that's a carbon copy. And uh, I've also got like a Hall of Fame reverb for a little bit of ambience. You hey, know. there you go. Um, and then over that, I've got my fuzz tone that I was talking about. Um, I keep calling it a fuzz tone, but it sounds a, like a fuzz tone. Yeah, but it's like it's weird because it's a OCD drive and a uh -huh. tentacle right before it, so it really sounds like a fuzz. Yeah, yeah. Um, or like an octa fuzz. Um, but the reason that so I used to use an octa fuzz. Um, but I figured out that I love the feel of an OCD. And I was like, well, if I can just take an octave and put it in front of an OCD, then I can maybe get 
the feel that I love and the octave, which is why I have both of those instead of just one octave fuzz. Yeah. Um, I yeah, love like the but... spit, like the spittiness of it. Yeah. It's that, like, like when I, when I sit down, you know, with the fuzz or, or, you know, just anything, it's like, I want it to sound as gnarly as possible, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> like the, the gnarlier, the better, you know, but <laughs> yeah. I do, I do like some crisp, clean tones. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. But you know, y- you know what I'm saying? It's like one of those things you just feel it and it just like, I don't know. It's like you're shooting lightning bolts out of your fingers or something like for that. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great feeling when you find that tone that you're looking for. It's like, you know, yeah, it's like a sigh of relief, but this like jolt of excitement as well. So totally. Yeah. So, so when you start playing live again, um, I'm sh- assuming that'll be your number one. Oh yeah, for sure. And then you have, yeah. you, you have a Sheridan that you said you bought like one, 10 years ago or something. Is that going to kind of stay in the, in the family or is that, does that stay at home now? You know, I hope I'm not hurting its feelings, but <laughs> <laughs> it is like this. It's funny because that guitar, like I played this one now and I'm like, God, I love this one. Like this is number one now. Yeah. Um, And so now my, my first Sheridan that this is based on, I, I kind of leave in a certain spot and I'm like, okay, you were the first 10 years of my career. I love you for that, but this is the next 10 years. You know, it's one of those yeah, things. Um, definitely. I, so I'm sure that your Sheridan understands. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. But it is funny though. Like you have these connections. Like I'm sure a lot of guitar players can relate. It's like you have these connections with your guitar where it's like, it's more than just a tool, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's a, uh, like an extension, you know, of, of who you are and, and, you know, this personality. And I know I've, I've said this on another stream before, but, um, you know, one of my favorite guitar players, um, Johnny Marr, uh, used to say like, you know, there's a song in every guitar, you know, you totally. just gotta like pull it out. Um, and I, I, that stuck with me so, so much when I go into like playing different guitars and new guitars or, you know, whatever, they all have their, their own personality to them. Isn't that um, so interesting? It's like this thing well, it used to be a tree. Yeah. And like, so it's kind of, <laughs> it was alive at one point. You never yeah. know what happened to that tree. And now it's this, like, you know, some mojos in there. And so, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Like some guitars you pick up and you just don't connect with. And some you do, like you just sit down with it and you're like, there's an album in this guitar, you know? Yeah, there it's was really for you. Definitely. <laughs> but no, that I, I think that's, um, you know, just a cool part about guitar in general, you know, and like the, the, the beauty of being a guitar player and, you know, and, and playing music and it's just such a, a release and, um, you know, a way to express yourself. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to express yourself and who you are, but when you have something like guitar, you know, kind of makes it a little bit easier, but definitely uh, getting deep now. This is I love it. <laughs> Go deep, dude. Yeah, it's crazy how many so there are so many notes on this on a guitar. And then like they all just have a different meaning. You know, yeah. it's like words in an English language. Like the way you say something can be taken in such a different way. And it's like, you know, I mean, even like pedals, like if I'm like, yeah. you know, <laughs> versus like it yeah. just says something so different to me. You know, it's yeah, really it's two different languages. And I love that about pedals. So yep. and guitar and you know. So when are you gonna yeah. come out with your signature pedal? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm ready. Right. There you now. go. Let's get an exactly Emily Wolf pedal. Any if anyone <laughs> uh any brands are listening here, yeah, hit her up. Let's go. But uh but yeah, that's awesome. Um love the guitar, you know, love love what you're doing with it and the music you're making and you know I can't wait to see you in Chicago. Um, you know, yeah, it's going to be, it'll, it'll be, it'll, it'll be great. And, you know, we'll just uh, cross our fingers, but uh, Emily, is there anything else you wanted to kind of say to the viewers before we uh, let you go here? I mean, you know, thanks for watching. And I, you know, if you want to pick up one of these guitars, it sounds, um, that'd be awesome. I know you'll love it as much as I do. And, uh, I hope it feels like yours because this feels like mine, you know, and even though it's a signature instrument, whoever owns it, I want it to feel like it belongs to them and I want them to get songs out of it. Like I did. Um, yeah. 
and that yeah i mean that's about it but i do want to know what is the best food in chicago best food in chicago oh goodness um you know it's really funny that people talk about the pizza all the time um deep dish pizza is actually not my favorite pizza i'm actually like a east coast pizza kind of type dude um but i would i mean i have to go with with like a chicago dog to be honest like with the, with the relish and the, the onion and the peppers and the mustard. I mean, you can't put ketchup on it. I mean, that's you literally, you'll get like beat up for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Don't go to like a hot dog, you know, a classic hot dog stand, you know, Vienna, Vienna beef hot dog stand in Chicago and, and ask for ketchup. They might, you know, they might They'll, like kick punch you in out. the face. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay. So and then, yeah, <laughs> don't get punched in the face in Chicago because of ketchup. That, that would just be pr- pretty lame. But um, no, definitely. I mean, I it's actually restaurant week in Chicago, which is kind of funny, you know, because it's it's difficult, you know, to go to restaurants. And I haven't really been to any restaurants in a while and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, Chicago's got amazing food. It's actually funny. Like I did a couple tours um, when I was younger and we used to just like we were more stoked about all the food in the cities that we went to. Then like sometimes playing the show or like going to Philly and we're like, dude, we can't wait to get Philly cheesesteaks. Oh yeah, but oh we're playing God. a show tonight. <laughs> yes. yes, I played it in Philly and I was beyond excited. I was like, and everyone's like, you gotta put the cheese whiz on it, man. Like, yeah. I'm like, do you the mean whiz. like and whiz? Because that's a little weird. And they're like, no, it's like liquid queso. And I'm like, let's <laughs> get that. Like, it's so good. So that's good. awesome. But yeah, but that's exciting about the Chicago dogs. I'm gonna have to get me one of those. Yeah. Sand- Chip. and they're they're simple you know there's a lot of places in chicago you just walk up windows and you know order a dog and go on with your day so so awesome awesome emily well it's been an absolute pleasure you know talking to you yeah. and learning about your guitar and learning about you and you know and everything so um yeah hope to talk soon and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and to anyone mm-hmm. uh that's watching you know feel free to head to zounds we got some links up here uh that'll go right to um the uh the page where emily's uh, signature guitar is and you can yeah. pick it up so thanks for having me had yeah, a blast talking to you no problem Alrighty, have a good yeah. one bye you too